Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has uh, predicted that more than half of all languages will be extinct by the end of the century. Can you believe it? Now, to take this discussion further, we are joined via Skype by Professor Felix Bander from the Department of Linguistics at the University of the Western Cape. Prof, great to have you. Thanks very, very much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. And here in the Johannesburg studio, we've got law graduate Tulu, Tuli Zulu, who is studying for a master's degree in human rights at the University of Pretoria. Tuli, awesome. Good to have you and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you for having me. All right. So I'm going to begin with Professor uh, that's on Skype right now. Professor, what is the role and value of languages in societies? Well, uh, language is everything. A society uh, cannot exist uh, without language and without communication. So language uh, is a very critical and of course also uh, a very important part of uh, um, community culture. So the issue of community culture and those are the things that uh, make community and community development. Yeah, yeah. We've, got a, we've got a very, very bad connection there. I'm going to um, take it away from you for a little bit, Professor, and we'll bring it into the studio. And All hopefully right. when I talk to you again, uh, the connection will be a little bit better. Um, Tuli, let me ask you the same question. I mean, from your understanding, especially, especially you studying human rights, you are doing law, you're doing human rights, though. Languages, where do they fit into all of that? Um, First of all, I think the development taken by the University of Basulu Natal speaks to the call by the Fees Must Fall activists when they talked about decolonizing the university but also doing so by including our languages in the curricula of the universities. So it's, it's, it's good to know that um, the University of Basulu Natal is making the Zulu language a language of knowledge production because it's one of the calls that were made by students. And also, it's going to make law more accessible, and also taking the language to court would be of convenience, especially to communities that are disadvantaged. So the student that is from Guamplanga or from Guandebele will be able to fully comprehend what is being said in class, mm. and so there won't be language barriers, and thus more access to education for those students. Which is a basic human right. I mean, yes, it is a human right for these students. To be able to study students. in your own language yes. is, it's amazing. It opens up the world to you, which is, a, which is a great thing, the world of education, because if you are forced to study in another language, but your home language is something completely yes. different. It does create a barrier between the student and their access to education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I often think of that and think if I was given an Isi Zulu textbook to go and study a master's in human rights, but I'm English speaking. <laughs> How am I going to do that? And that's, that's the reality of South Africans mm. and so many South Africans. Um, and that's, that's that talk when language doesn't become an integral yes, part of many yes, lives. Yes, because there are those incidences when you don't fully comprehend what is being said on a question paper. And sometimes I too would think to myself, but if this was maybe written in Zulu or something, maybe I could understand what the question wants of me. So I think the implementation of the glossary in Isi Zulu will make law students understand more um, when it comes to law that understand um, their studies yeah. well. Prof, I'm going to bring you back into the conversation now because um, I, I think we're all sorted now with the, with the connection. You know, according to what I, what I said a little bit earlier, um, there are more than 7,000 living languages and UNESCO have now said um, that a lot of languages are actually going to dis disappear. What do you make of the study? I mean, what, what kind of languages are we talking to here? Yes, uh, uh, there are many languages that are in danger of hearing from um, uh, Earth, and a good number of them are uh, from Africa. So, um, I mean, projects like this, uh, which in a way uh, ensure that it is uh, documented, in this case, uh, the technology 
law terminology um, or actually forever, you know, that uh, material can always continue added on. Mm -hmm. And to add on to that, uh, to what you, uh, the other case was talking about, the, there is another advantage to this. Um, it actually means that um, uh, Isis Rumata speakers will have access uh, to not only Isis but also to English. So they can always, again, work between the two languages. So uh, to me, it's like it's a double advantage what, what is happening here. Yeah. So they have access to it in the mother tongue, but they can also look at the English term and if they speak Afrikaans, also take a look and then that will make it so easy for them to understand you know, this. Uh, the, no. But coming back to your, um, uh, the languages, yes, that's, that's a real threat and we actually need more projects such as and um, uh, the people at then are now more like pioneers, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, other university, not only in South Africa, but Africa generally, have this course. Yeah. So yeah. that more languages are, uh, are brought into uh, uh, this, uh, you know, terminology, and so on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's quite incredible. I'm reading um, the same study that's basically saying, listen to this, Tuli. I mean, this is very frightening, saying that um, of the 7,000 languages, nearly half of these are going to be extinct by the end of the century. It further predicts yeah. that it is estimated that one language dies every two weeks. I mean, that is, that is very scary. And if you're saying that affects very much so a lot of African languages, you know, that, that in itself is, is a great worry. How do we protect them? How do we try and ensure that these languages don't die? Uh, Tuli, I don't know if you want to talk to that or we'll, I'll actually ask both of you okay. to respond. Um, we need people who are going to intentionally work on preserving these languages. Um, we need people who are going to make sure that they continue speaking these languages at home with their children, with their neighbors, because it's frightening to see, um, for example, Zulu people in a mall speaking in English. Those are some of the things that aid into the extinction of these languages. So we need people who are going to intentionally and make it their mission that these languages don't die. Yeah. Because if we continue speaking only English and other foreign languages, we are perpetuating the idea of coloniality, saying our languages are not as better as the Western languages. And I'm sure in the study, most of the languages that are being extinct are the African languages because of coloniality. And also because of how we are colonized in our minds, thinking that if we twang and if you speak English like this, then we've made it in life. But then nobody want to speak these languages when they get to um, big institutions like your University of Pretoria. So I think it's it's just playing into the element of colonialism. Yeah, I mean, we, we, yeah. we're celebrating, Prof, I'm going to ask you to answer that as well, but just to sort of add into your answer, we're celebrating UKZN publishing a first ever glossary of law terms in Isi Zulu, but Isi Zulu is just one of our African languages. Right, yes. What about the rest of the languages? Is it not our responsibility to preserve these and have textbooks across the range? Yes. Uh, um, uh, the, the the good thing to get from this, uh, is this Zulu is part of the uh, Uni uh, uh, language group. Uh, so it actually means the other languages in the group can easily view from what is happening there. And, um, and, and yes, uh, you know, this could be a, a blueprint um, for. Uh, even, I might say, the Bantu languages, because these languages are, are related. And um, the most important thing is to make sure that actually the terminology that has been that is developed, it's, it's actually used. Uh, because if uh, you just get the terminology and nobody uses it, then we are back to 
the square one. So I agree with the, uh, the other um, guests that the most important thing is to make sure that we use African languages uh, wherever we can, uh, because it makes uh, sense if we get the terminology and then we use them. Yeah. 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 Yes. So it's very important, but I think the most important thing here to say is that um, uh, what has happened here can easily be replicated um, across the continent, yeah. and that way help um, uh, conserve our, our languages. Because okay. actually, Africa is the only continent with still so many languages. So we know that Africa is dying, but um, Africa still has more languages than Europe, for example. So it's our advantage to serve them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because otherwise, just end up with uh, maybe ink and French. Okay, okay. Prof, I'm going to have to leave it there. Um, this is such an interesting discussion. I wish we had more time. I'm reading as well how um, it, it was a BBC story that they put together saying at 84, Miss Esau is one of the last three fluent speakers of Nlu, one of the languages spoken by South Africa's San community. And that is amazing. I mean, three people left, and that's what they attribute languages dying to, is when small communities start disappearing their language disappears, and we never want that to be the case. Yes. Thank you. Keep going, keep studying, and we look forward to seeing all the things that you do with your human rights uh, law degree. So um, we've got with us here Tuli Zulu, who's a University of Pretoria master's student, and via Skype we had Professor Banda talking to us about the role and importance of languages in society. We take a break, and it's goodbye after this. Stay tuned.